Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Idris Goodwin. I am the director of the Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center at Colorado College. Um, today, we are going to be having a conversation um, on the theme of arts and social action. Um, so greetings, hello. Um, this is going to be mainly uh, a focused conversation on uh, our community of uh, El Paso County, community of Colorado Springs uh, and, and the region. But uh, because of the, the wonders of technology, um, you know, I, I hope that we've got some viewers uh, and listeners beyond. And so uh, while we will be speaking mostly about our neck of the woods, our corner of the world, uh, we think that a lot of what is being discussed today uh, will be uh, relatable beyond. Um, as the world is finding itself dealing with um, large global spanning crises, community crises, both health and social, um, we believe that conversation is very necessary. Um, it's going to take all of us to be at the table and then we um, have platforms to talk about the future and what it looks like and how we build it together. Every sector is being affected, and those of us uh, at the uh, Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center at Colorado College felt the need to reach out to our, our artist community, our arts administrator community, um, and begin the conversations about, you know, how, what is our responsibility, you know, as, as art makers, as art lovers, as art presenters um, to, to, to the world, truly. Um, and so we, um, for this inaugural one, um, I wanted to assemble uh, as diverse a panel as I could in terms of um, experience, discipline, background, and perspective. Um, and so please join me in welcoming them. I'm going to introduce them uh, one at a time. Um, so first and foremost, joining me, um, uh, Morgan Calderini and Ali uh, Torson um, are the co-founders of the award-winning Lady Fingers Letter Press a queer owned and operated stationery and gift brand based in downtown Colorado Springs. Hello. Hi. Uh, <laughs> hello, thank you for joining us. Uh, next we have uh, Lynn Hastings. Uh, Lynn has been part of the theater community in Colorado Springs for nearly 25 years. Uh, you've seen her on, on theater works, UCCS stages, and of course our very own Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center, Colorado College stages. Hello, Lynn Hastings. Hello, welcome home. Mr. Goodwin. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have uh, Juan J. Morales, uh, an award-winning poet, uh, professor and department chair of English and World Literatures, or World Languages, sorry, at Colorado State University Pueblo. He is our, he is our, our, uh, our neighbor to the south. Uh, he's also the edi editor and publisher of Pilgrimage Press. Hello, Juan. Idris, everyone, it's good to see you all. I look forward to the conversation. Uh, and finally, last but not least, we have Andy Vick, who is the executive director of the cultural office of the Pikes Peak region. Hello, Andy. Hey, Dries, good to see you. Yes, good to see you all. Um, so, wow, we, we, you know, we have enough to talk uh, endlessly. To, we have enough to talk um, uh, until the end of time and then back again. But uh, we, we only have a, a, a very, you know, specific limited amount of time. So, and there's so much to get into. So I thought an appropriate place to start uh, was really just on a personal level. Um, you know, all of us are doing our part and dealing in our own ways uh, with, with how the world is, is shifting so rapidly and how it's shifted in like a hundred days. Um, how have you been coping uh, is the first part of my question. And the second part of my question, um, you know, and maybe it could be combined to the same question is, uh, how have, have, have the arts uh, been helping you cope? Uh, so how have you been coping generally and how have the arts helped you cope or have they in any way shift or form? Oh, you just dive yeah. in. We're not going to call them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'll jump in. Go uh, ahead, Andy. And, and just say quickly that uh, I've actually been pleasantly surprised at how well our office has been able to adjust and work remotely. We started working remotely like many in mid-March uh, and have been and plan to be for some time. Um, we've had to make some reductions in our budget, change some programs, but we've added some new programs. So 
all in all, I'd say our small staff has really done a good job of responding and trying to get out in front and provide some guidance and support to the rest of the arts community, uh, which is in essence exactly what we're supposed to be doing as the community's local arts agency. Yeah, so a quick, quick pivot, immediate, immediate uh, suiting up and getting into the fray. Uh, how about how about others? How about others? Um, my regular job is not in the arts. I work nine to five, so that keeps me busy um, doing something other than the art. But I have been extremely impressed with how the arts community has really been agile uh, with what's going on. Um, it, it just shows how creative this community is um, in Colorado Springs. And I just never cease to be impressed with the programming that the FAC's done, um, theater works doing comedy of errors via Zoom, um, you know, Jim and Brigida doing the cooking every day. I'm just so impressed. Um, and it keeps me connected to the arts because my job nine to five is not directly connected with the arts. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Others. Um, we, so we have a storefront downtown in addition to, um, kind of working with people all over the country on, um, our printmaking and our design work. Um, so March was, I think, the worst month we've ever had in 10 years of business um, as artists. Um, and it was kind of, we felt, we felt it coming um, in terms of sensing that it was out ahead of us. And so we were having conversations, I think, at the end of February, kind of being like, what, what will this be like? How will this impact things? Um, and we made it through March. Um, but we have you know, tried as quickly as possible to take what was a in-person experience for our um, community and take it and expand what we were already doing online. Um, and so that I think took us the month of March to kind of get that experience as much as we could through the web. Yeah, we started doing um, daily hand lettering classes, free classes, um, just trying to keep them you know, sort of spirits high for people and uh, try to stay connected with everyone in a sort of creative way. So, um, yeah, it was, it was a, little, a little insane. Um, um, but now I think that we are, um, it's, it's funny to like wake up every day and feel like, oh, it's just the same thing over and over. Um, and so I think that that's something that we're really trying to pay attention to for ourselves and think about how that translates into our community and how do we become a part of uh, you mean like the change is something that keeps happening over and over like you wake <laughs> up and you're like oh what's it today and like <laughs> yeah. now we're just used to constantly shifting and adjusting and responding and reacting so uh, interesting yeah that's interesting yeah Juan, what how about you how, how are things yeah what's the vibe in pueblo you know you are you are our, uh are out of towner, what, even though I'm I'm still in Kentucky. But anyway, we're not talking about that. Uh, what, how are things? What, what's the vibe in Pueblo? Well, Pueblo is hanging in there. Um, you know, sim similar to a lot of places in the Front Range, where we're in smaller communities. We have the, we're, we're very lucky that you know some of us could migrate to 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 working remotely, such as myself and my family. Um, but but also we're also very fortunate because we do have access to the outdoors where we can we can responsibly get the fresh air because and, and in a lot of ways that's what the arts has been kind of like down here as well as I can tell from up in Colorado Springs is just kind of adapting, rolling with the punches and just kind of figuring out how we can use Zoom social in social media and things like that to stay connected and to remind each other that the, the arts are present, the arts are supporting uprisings the arts are supporting local businesses and all these other types of elements so you're kind of you're kind of seeing the same energy and vibe down here in pueblo as well um yeah so that's great yeah and you know so as you all are, are talking um you know it's making me think of like the challenge that we have before us because you know we're we're seeing this intersection right we're seeing this intersection of you know this health crisis but then this this other kind of 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 health crisis, right? This sort of social health crisis, and then also all of that is is creating this mental health crisis as well. In addition to, and I think a lot of ways, uh, a sense of urgency and focus um, on these kind of issues. And so I know me personally, like I, I'm certainly feeling certainly a sense of urgency for the arts 
to be at the table, you know, mm -hmm. as we talk about how to move forward. It's like making, you know, so what, how, what are y'all's thoughts on that? I mean, about art and responsibility and, and art, you know, as art, artists, as architects, and, and even Andy, I love your thoughts as well as, you know, in terms of the position of the office of, of uh, you know, the cultural office and its, and its dedication to support. I mean, you know, what are, what are artists' responsibilities or is there one or is that, is that open to, you know, is that, does that depend on the person? You know, I'd love to just kind of start stirring up the soup on, on this idea. I'll, I'll defer to an actual artist uh, first uh, who, who would like to respond to that. You know, I, I think for me, what this time period has made me realize and, you know, having worked at Theater Works as artistic producer and saying, you know, that everyone's story deserves to be told, everyone has a seat at the table. This is brought to light to me that we, we say that a lot, and not just in Colorado Springs, but I think in American theater overall, um, that is the mantra and there's initiatives behind EDI, but initiatives to me just haven't produced much action. There hasn't been a lot of tactile that you could feel and see and hear with those EDI initiatives. And so I think for me, this time has just made me go, it needs to be the truth. In American theater. Mm. You mm. know, everybody mm. has a seat at the table and not just twice a year. You have a seat at our table all season, all mm. season long. You sit at this table, you have a voice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Juan. Um, <laughs> because you can't kind of tell the truth. You can't be a little truthful. truthful. There's no gray in truth. And so I think the time is now for American theater to make equity, diversity, inclusion, their truth. And mm. it needs to be, it needs to be lived, not just yeah. marketed. Yeah. It needs yeah. to be lived. And we need to see it all the time, not two shows a year. And so that has just fired me up because I feel like I wasn't fired up enough, like George Floyd mm. and seeing that cop with his hand in his pocket. Man, if I'd been mm. there, I probably would have punched him in the throat because that was such a huge disregard for who he yeah. was as a person. And I think that American theater is disregarding um, a little mm. bit more because we do a lot of talk and let's get mm. some action. Let's walk the talk now. So that's, that's kind of how I feel the arts should be um, moving towards. This is a great time to do it because you're not producing, yeah. you're not programming. Let's get some strategic action going. That's great. That's great, Lynn. And real, real quick follow up on that, Lynn. I wonder, you know, you're saying you you feel very fired up, and so like, you know, it, it, you know, and and you know, you, this this might be like a large question that you don't have to answer right away, but like, mm -hmm. you know, I think about someone like you, and 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 you, you know, everyone in the region knows you. They know, you know what I mean. And um, you know, you've had all this experience. Like, you know, do you feel? How do I want to ask this? Like. How does how does a Lynn Hastings leverage that twenty five years, right? Yeah, to, you know what I'm saying to 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 help this field that may not know how to what moves yeah. to make. It may be resistant out of some kind of self preservation, but mm -hmm. um, you know. So that's my that's like my question for you is like, have you have you thought about that or or what is that? What do you think that looks like? Um, I think that looks like a level of accountability. Um, almost like we're doing with like the protests and defunding the police. And I've been out on protests with my daughter, my little activist. She's making me up my game. Um, <laughs> you know, I need I need to to be a good role model for her. So I think instead of wow. what I need to do, instead of accepting kind of that talk and not so much that action and that accountability and making sure that we're consistent in having seats at the table for everyone. I need to to really hold folks accountable without being, you know, mean or anything like that, but just to be a reminder. That is my job as yeah. an older theater community member who's been here around uh, around a while who has seen it evolve. I think we can continue evolving and I think we need to ramp it up a hair. Yeah. If you want me to be honest, you know, the evolution yeah. is happening, but now I feel like we just have to God, we could be with the end center. We could be on the forefront of what American theater should look like. 
Oh, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, great, great. Well said. I'm very excited. What other thoughts? Other thoughts? We're fixing everything, y'all. Well, you know, um, we are in this uh, sort of dual position where we have a business where we sell our art in the form of greeting cards and we have a stationary line. And then we are also a press. You know, we have letter presses and we, uh, you know, so truly believe in the power of the press and using that as a mechanism for, you know, spreading, spreading the word. I mean, now, obviously, there's technology that does that, too. But, um, you know, there's something really powerful about seeing something printed, seeing something hung up in a window, um, seeing something posted to a, 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 po a post. Yeah, and seeing crowds of protesters holding words up um, that are printed. Um, I think one of the really powerful things for us is we have this series of posters that we started making a long time ago um, based on our own experience advocating for the ability to marry each other. Back in the day in Rhode Island, we, we printed thousands of posters and handed them out at a protest at City Hall um, and at the State House. And then we saw on the news that night, our words were all over the news. They weren't necessarily interviewing people, but they had printed versions of everything, you know, and it was this moment of us realizing that we had just an infinite amount of capacity to spread things um, and we could spread ideas and words and messages and images in a way that I think sometimes people lose track of um, that and it's always what's drawn us to print making. Um, so we over the years have added to this kind of series of protest posters and now we have 15 and then we we hand them out for free in town we just like want people to have them um we give them out if people give money we donate that money like it's just really this thing where we want people to have the messages in their hands um and i think the more that we have been working on this like um idea it's also become clear to me too that um you know the equipment that we use is and the facilities that you need to maintain it are it's, it's expensive it's extensive there's a lot of infrastructure um and i our background is in community printing um and making those tools accessible to people so they can spread their own messages is something that we're spending a lot of time thinking about always but i think this has renewed um our Fire. thinking <laughs> about like how we start making and how do we get those tools into the hands of people so they can spread their own messages we can spread our message but we want to also make sure that we are making all of the things that are available to us available to other people to spread their word too yeah so yeah you're making me think of of access right and and um you know access and skill building and this prioritization of communities words and ideas um on that on that tip you know words and images one i immediately must defer to the poet in the room um <laughs> around you know the, your work with pilgrimage uh for example and 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 your and your, your work with students and, and building their voice i mean how does all this fall on your ears well I mean, you know, we're getting pulled in all kinds of directions, like you're all like, like everyone is saying, you know, there's this kind of, there's, there's pressures to be like, well, there's a, there's a pandemic, so I should be retreating and producing and, you know, my book should be done and things like that. But, but I, I agree with what, what everyone is saying that this is a good time to, to, to contemplate, reflect and have hard conversations about what can be done and how to, how to go forward with it. And the arts are a good way to kind of express that, convey it, you know, gain consensus. But also, it's also an important time to continue to the momentum of, of galvanizing and put, bringing everyone together with 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 the arts in these innovative ways, especially especially with the, the beautiful signs at the protests and and having those behind behind the scenes kind of planning meetings. Um, when it comes to pilgrimage specifically, I'll, I'll be honest, you know, I, I I you know I'm at a public university, so. The transition to remote teaching was very abrupt. It was pretty much like a, over a week, you know. So we had to, to do some very quick adapting, and and pilgrimage was was affected by that because we had to like figure out the technical logistics of how can students work remotely along with me remotely. So so um, it, we we have figured out some strategies, but productions get delayed. But 
I, you know, thankfully people are patient and understanding that, you know, and that, that the good work is still continuing to get done with the printing, the writing and the productions that, that we're talking about. So, um, so th this, you know, I, I guess one of the small seeds of hope, you know, another one, another example of the seeds of hope right now is that we're, we're learning to innovate. We're learning how to write, you know, we're learning how to create in these, in these new ways while still kind of being responsible, you know, like everyone wearing the, wearing the masks at the protests and staying staying home when you can even though even if you do want to go purchase a new pair of shorts or whatever so um so i think that i think i think it's that kind of that balancing act everyone is talking about that that kind of helps and and i'm trying to sneak in some time to to work on my own writing which 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 goes along the lines of that healing that healing mental health kind of component that is very critical in these times you have to you have to take moments to to acknowledge the hurt, the anger, the frustration, and the confusion, because I still don't know what's going on half the time. Yeah, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, to that, oh, I'm sorry, were you about to, no, I'm sorry. I couldn't tell. We need a bell. We need like a, I'm, I'm about to talk bell. I was just saying. Okay, same. there you go. Same, same here. Uh, okay, Church Tabernacle Preach. Um, Andy, I, I'm thinking a lot about, you know, when, when Juan was uh, speaking about skills, like learning new skills and innovation, you know, I remember something that, that you all did uh, at the, at the uh, cultural office that really impressed me, which was that you all started offering these videos, a series of videos uh, of skill building. Um, what, you know, talk a little bit about that, about, you know, you all's, um, you know, like how, how did that all come to pass and, and, and how was that going and will there be more? Yeah. So as a, a local arts agency, we're a step removed from the actual production of art, uh, the way Lynn or Juan or, or Morgan and Arlie are creating directly. So our job is to set up the scaffolding, if you will, that's going to allow the artists' uh, voices to be heard and give them uh, new opportunities as we figure out how this all works in this new environment. So uh, Angela Seals, actually our deputy director, gets credit for coming up with the Pro Tips series. We have some uh, consultants that we work with uh, who help us a lot to do our job, and we thought let's ask them for some expertise that we can share with uh, the broader community through that series. So that was a really uh, early on uh, uh, effort to try to give artists and others in the community some tools to help them move forward and figure out how they can. Uh, best adapt in their own way to the community. So that worked out really well. We had some good feedback to that. You know, we're also building some new programs. We're thinking about how do we uh, modify Arts Month this October so that it is responsive to what's going on in the community and how can we elevate voices that need to be elevated. Uh, so there's a lot of work to provide the support and the infrastructure to allow our creative community to really express their, their thoughts on these important topics. Um, one quick follow-up for you, Andy, just to, um, you know, one of the things that's in y'all's description uh, that I appreciate is you all talk about, you know, how critical the arts are to driving, you know, the economy of a, mm -hmm. of a city. And so in this time where the economy is, is not doing so hot, uh, it's not the worst it's ever been, um, you know, could you say a little bit more about the recovery, like what the recovery might look like? And not to put you totally on the spot for something that you guys don't have to single-handedly solve, but um, but this idea of of the arts being critical to economic growth, I think that's something that everyone on this call agrees with. Um, you know, what what are some things that you all have been thinking about? Um, you know, on the you know when you think about the whole city and the whole economy in Colorado Springs and how it's gonna how it might bounce back and, and what role do we in the arts have to play? Well, you're, you're right that uh, we're taking a pretty big hit right now, and a lot of our uh, economic drivers, theaters, performance venues, galleries, they're struggling or not even able to be open right now. So our perspective has been, how do we keep the arts on the minds of the community? How do we make sure that we're not forgotten amidst all of this chaos that's going on? So we've been really aggressive about making sure that we're celebrating positive things that are happening on social media. Uh, we've been really uh, focused on working actually with um, UCCS, uh, started this, this program uh, where they wanted to convene community and, 
have a working group to talk about reopening and to talk about what it's like to be in a gallery or, or um, museum situation or what it's like to be in a performance art situation. So we've been very involved in those conversations and we're actually working on a, uh, a marketing campaign that will hopefully celebrate the arts community as it is now and really showcase the diversity of our arts community and really elevate that. Uh, so until we have a better sense for what the future looks like and how we do come out of this, we just wanna make sure that the arts community is still front and center, that we're still out there, we're still creating, we're still sharing our good work with the broader community so that we don't get forgotten and so when, yeah. it is when it is time to come out of this mess, we'll be ready to go and uh, just hit the ground running. Oh yeah, that's, I, I think everybody is definitely is feeling you on that tip. Um, so I, have a, I have a question, it's, it's for really all y'all. Um, and, uh, and I'm asking this you know, for the benefit of the millions of viewers that we have right now, but also <laughs> for myself too, right? You know, I think that, that Colorado Springs arts community is kind of a best kept secret, actually. Um, I, I think, you know, in my six years living there before, you know, I, I just had great times. I met some great, really inspiring people that I kept up with. And to be quite honest, my decision to come back was based around the fact that I felt like when I left, there was unfinished business. Like I was starting to really build some really great relationships with agencies such as, you know, such as um, uh, the cultural office, with you know the Lynns and the and the Morgans and the Arleys and the Wands and and um so my question is is like how would you all in your own words uh, describe you know does Colorado Springs have a vibe does it have an arts vibe you know like how what does that what does the arts scene of Colorado Springs look like how would you characterize it that's part one of the question and part two of the question is what's missing. What's missing? Now, obviously, like we're in COVID-19, so there's a ton missing. Like we're not, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> less than six feet of distance is missing. But, um, you know, what's it missing? What would you love to see, right? Like, what would you, what do you love about it? But then what do you, what is, what would you, what would you wish for? What would you wish it had more of? So that's a very large question, but, you know, you all are giants in your, in your field. Yeah. So I feel like you can handle it. Well, I'll take a swing at the first part, which is, uh, you know, what is the vibe? What is the scene? And frankly, that's something we've struggled with to put a little handle on it. What is it? You know, like you think of Santa Fe, you think of the galleries, mm -hmm. you think of New York City, you think of theater, you think of Hollywood, in California, you think of, you know, the, the film arts. I, I don't know that I could synthesize down what we are into one succinct little thing. Um and we always try to figure out what that is because that's a great marketing tool. If we could get that, you know, yeah, right. put it in a bottle and know how to label it and call it, that's what we'd be marketing. So I, I mm -hmm. think we're still trying to figure that out, at least from our office, how do we label it? But I would agree that it's a really rich and diverse and vibrant and energetic creative community that sometimes gets shadowed by what's going on up in Denver just because of proximity. And so I think we have to uh, continue to define ourselves and to uh, make our voices heard creatively. And also, I think we've done this as a city. We've, we've really stepped up our game as the vitality of the city as a whole has come up over the last five, six years. Uh, thanks in large part, you know, to the work of uh, Mayor Southers and, and other leaders in the city. Um, we're a presence like we weren't I think six, seven years ago. And uh, that comes with a lot of good stuff and it gives us a chance to be a little bit more vocal and a little bit more proud about the great work that we're doing down here. Right on. Yeah, well said. Other thoughts, other assessments. We're so excited you're coming back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> um, uh, when we got to email, you know, just last week uh, that you wanted to have this call, we were like, oh my gosh, like there's so much going on, but we'll do anything for you. Like, <laughs> um, so I'm going to be back. <laughs> and um, I grew up here and left and swore I would never come back. Um, mm. I've learned not to do things like that. Like definitely don't mm. say never um, <laughs> in life, but I, it's an interesting place having grown up here and then to be back. We have moved, lived here since 2014. Together, yeah. Together as a queer couple with our business downtown. And um, 
I I do think it's changing very quickly. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm excited about seeing more going on. Um, when you talk about what's missing, I think kind of the, again, the access and point of entry is mm. can be very high uh, if you're just starting out or you're a new artist or you want to try something out. Um, you know, our before we lived um, back here most recently, we were living in Providence and there were little tiny hole in the wall galleries where the rent was $500 and someone could afford to try something, you know, you could put it together. There was just like a, a less of a bar to putting together a show or a performance space or a little one night, whatever experiment. Um, and so I think that that's one of the things I feel like I hope I see more of, um, mm -hmm. but with real estate, you know, it's, it, it can, real estate impacts the arts in so many ways. Um, and I, and I wonder if maybe some of the economy taking a hit will help the artists have more affordable space to be doing more work that is more experimental, that is less of a mm -hmm. financial piece of the puzzle and more like, I want to make this work and just put it out there and I can afford to do that because there's open spaces that someone's just desperate for someone to activate, to do something. Yeah. Like. The more experimental, yeah, the more, of, of like a compost effect happen, you know, the more crap gets piled on, you know, something rises out, something beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think um, just that, that fact that just more stuff, less risk, more experimentation. Um, would, yeah, there's de destined to be good things coming out of it. We also really miss yeah. hand sales, if we're gonna get anybody oh, back in town. Yeah. Oh, hand sales? Yeah, yeah. yeah. hand sales if you're watching, come home. <laughs> 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 uh, well, let's let hand cells live. Hand cells is life. Um, yes, I would love more more thoughts. Uh, Lynn, Juan, because um, Juan, you grew up. You grew up in Colorado Springs, didn't you? I did, but I want to hear what Lynn says first because oh, I because yeah, I, sure. I want to. I, I, I'm 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 I'm. Con I'm I'm percolating here. I, I want to riff with y'all, but I want to hear. I want to hear from Lynn first, if that's okay. No, that's fine. That's sure. Yeah, that's and I didn't grow up here, but my parents moved here when I was 15. So oh, I mean, wow. my parents moved here in 1984. And I left to swearing I would never come back. Mm -hmm. I came back thinking I'd be here for a year. I was moving on. Colorado Springs, just, you know, the reputation that at the time, that was the Amendment 2 time. Mm -hmm. And this is what I love about the arts community. The arts community has saved Colorado Springs' reputation from that time in the early 90s um, because that that was our persona for a long time. And I think it's been the arts community that has helped change it because we have such talented artists in this town that they could be anywhere but here, but they are here. And I think that's what I love most about our arts community is that these brilliant artists who could be working anywhere else have chosen to stay here and build the community yeah. and have the arts be a part of the reputation of Colorado Springs and, and to show that's, that's who we are really at our mm -hmm. core. Um, and not, and we're evolving again from that amendment to um, issue two. But I also think that this, this uh, pandemic has brought out the best in these artists. And I hope that we continue to make it accessible. We talk about accessibility and man, have we found mother, you know, what is it? Uh, Necessity is the mother of invention. And it, it's brought this new access to theater. And, and that's also been a ch struggle with American theater is accessibility. And so because of the talent in this community, I think we have found other ways to be accessible. And I hope that continues to grow. And I hope we don't go back to what we used to do. Let's take that phrase. That's the way we've always done it. That'll kill a business. That'll kill um, any kind of organization. That's the way we've always done it. So I hope that everybody's going to embrace this and find a new way to do things. And we're just yeah. a group to do it. It's it, The talent's here. The minds are here. Yeah. We're brilliant. Yeah. Period. Well, toot, yeah, toot. that's a quote. That's a quote. <laughs> toot, that. toot, Colorado Springs <laughs> Arts Community. <laughs> so, so, Juan, yeah, your thoughts. 
Oh yeah, I would, I'm definitely building on that because um, I did grow up in Colorado Springs um, until you know I for yeah I grew up there, lived there for a long time, and then I moved away, and then grad school Pueblo, and and that's where I've been ever since. And you know, I'm I'm kind of I think I think our communities can learn from each other because they think it you know there's there's different. I'm, I'm looking I'm looking at my 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 notes based on your two questions, Idris, but. Uh, there, there. I think, I think along the front range, south of Denver, even Colorado Springs, even though, even though you are a much bigger city, there is this kind of interesting kind of paradox where some, some parts feel small and then some parts feel big. So it's, it's kind of, I think part of the vibe when it succeeds mixes that kind of that small communal accessible energy that that you know that makes people go to First Friday art walks in springs or in pueblo and feel welcome you know like they don't kind of feel like you know well i'm not i don't i don't i don't you know this isn't my style of art or this is my performance and and i think that that kind of silo building where you're seeing like the food trucks next to the gallery next to the exhibit with the musician playing on the side th those are the things that have to kind of continue once we are able to uh, to do so more more uh safely you know and it's it's hard to perform with the mask on of course but you should um but also area you know I, I speaking to both communities that things that can be kind of developed is 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 more of those development and mentorship opportunities to kind of grow the hometown talents you know i i think it's great to hear all these stories where people take it for granted leave and then come back yeah. but i think that that is probably that is kind of a natural tendency of creating good energy is when people say i'm going to leave gain knowledge wisdom and come back and serve the community so to kind of embrace and kind of brace that that kind of why can't why 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 can't i quit you baby kind of approach is important you know so um but but i think all these ideas are are not going to succeed unless unless um there's some continued redefinition of what is the vibe what is the culture because it can't it, you know be, that's why these important conversations are happening right now about about diversity and and the things that have been here all along that that are creating the difficult conversations and how art is the platform that that is the entryway into them that's well said man um i got a com we got a comment here uh, and I, and it's a, it's a beautifully worded question, and I and so I, I was saving it for the end because I, I think this will be a great uh, topic or, or note to end on. So I'd love to hear from all of you on this. Um, the power of this emotion and energy within the arts community is energizing. How does the broader community become a part of this action by the artists in Colorado Springs? Many who are not necessarily of the arts would like a role, would like to participate in spreading ideas and taking steps to make change. I wonder how the arts can lead us to a better, stronger community as a whole, which I feel like that question alone is a work of art. So salute, salute. Well, I'll jump in and I'll also reference what Morgan, I think said earlier, you know, it can be hard to find your way in to a community and uh, if you're not familiar with it. And that's really, I think, a, at the core of what we're about as a cultural office, as a local arts agency, is how do we create engagement? How do we invite others to get involved? And so uh, if you'll forgive the shameless plug, you know, that's what Peak Radar and the Peak Radar platform are all about. Events, stories about artists, uh, social media, um, all these things that help to invite people in and give them a central resource to connect with the arts. So, you know, how do you get more people involved? I'm gonna suggest plug into the mothership. That's what Peak Radar is, right? That is the arts mothership. And if you wanna be a part of this arts community, that's an easy first step that'll turn you on to all these great things that are going on, introduce you to artists in the community uh, and enable you to find ways to plug in that makes sense for you. We will add uh, Pike's, uh, I'm, I'm hoping somebody's probably putting that in the chat somewhere. It'll probably appear somewhere, a link to uh, the Peaks Radar. Peakradar.com. Um, Peakradar.com, cool, cool. Yeah, other, other thoughts on, uh, on this wonderfully worded question? Um, if it's cool, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead, Juan. You've let me go, you go. All right, all right. I'll, I'll, um, 
I, I think I, you know, um, usually when I take this type of que- when I when I when I talk about this type of question, it starts with this that you know just that standard concept of literary citizenship. You know, just kind of thinking about how you can contribute to that community. You know, even if you're going to an open mic and and don't feel brave enough to perform at that at that time, you're in the seat. You're 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 you know you're giving good energy, and and then you know just kind of the other thing is is going back to the idea of of, of finding t- opportunities to develop the talent in the interaction because. Because I think it's, a, it's it, we have to remember that people have to people do want to produce art on their own, and and they, they may not feel like the professional or even the amateur, but they want to produce it. So give them those opportunities, those workshops, and the, the and the skills. But also reminding reminding everyone in our community that the, the the concept of art is is you know I think sometimes people think it's it's so narrowly defined because. If you if you're a really wicked good cook, then you're you're that's some art you're that you're creating nicely. If 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 you're that cheese maker, hell yeah, do it, you know. Um, but also, but if you know, also with the community gardens and all these other aspects, there there is an art to it, and they and they help they help they help fuel what's called the conventional arts. So just remembering that that we all produce it, and so finding the ways to kind of feel emboldened to 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 kind of show share it and show it and making sure the community is there to welcome it and nurture it. I want to also as we're as we're responding to that that question, I want to like sneak in two other questions that I think kind of relate. And so I'm going to throw them both in. One is a question about, you know, um, uh, bridges to diversity, you know, being more inclusive, being more intentional about diversity, opening things up, you know, that 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 you know, what does that look like in the future of Colorado Springs? And then there's a question around around kids, like younger people, you know, how do we, you know, and I think all of these questions are about how do we just be more, I think they're, they're, if I have to condense it, it's a question of like, part of how we make a real scene is if we're thinking about how everyone can be engaged, right? Like patrons, multiple generations of, of arts enthusiasts, the hobbyist, you know, the aspiring master, uh, but this question too about you know how are we um, checking to make sure that the faces in the room and the and the lives that are in the room that are represented are, are from all different corners of our of our community. So I I I load that question up with more questions and I toss it back to you all to say brilliant things. Um, you know, and so oh, go ahead, Lynn. Oh. I think sometimes it comes down to accessibility and expanding your program be, beyond. And I'm talking from a theater perspective because that's what I know. Um, but going, doing programming beyond your stages, um, being creative about how to make your art accessible where people don't have to come to you, where you can come to them. Um, you know, one of the wonderful things that Caitlin Lowens has been doing with theater works is to get out in the community. And that's what we need to do. Instead of waiting, you know, if you build it, they will come. You have to make sure that everybody feels invited. And you can only do that by going out into the community and um, finding those people who are enthusiastic, looking for volunteers. Theaters are always looking for volunteers um, where they don't have to come see a show to feel like a part of your community. They don't have to be a subscriber. They don't have to be a donor. They can just be a part of the community and be a part of the arts community. So I think it's important to to go out into the community to help build that and help people feel like there's a place that they belong. Uh, the Ant Center is pretty intimidating um, for some folks. And I think, you know, that you have to get out in the community to let them know it's more than this big silver building in an area of town that some people don't feel they belong. And so you have to get out where they live. Um, I think, uh, one of the things that surprised us recently was someone asked if we had any products in our store that we sell that were made by BIPOC folks. So black indigenous people of color, um, who were makers that, uh, made things that we buy and sell in our store. And it didn't even occur to us that we needed to be saying that we did because we always have, um, as queer people, we have always sought out uh, like makers who reflect not just the community here in Colorado Springs, but the community that we want to see in Colorado Springs. So we had people asking us, like, do you have any products made by black people? And we just were kind of blown away because we're like, oh my gosh, like, yes, of course we do. 
And um, it's been interesting to think about how do you share those stories about the makers um, and how do you address all of that as a business, but also as a maker yourself. Um, and we certainly do not have the answers, but uh, we're working on like, you know, how do we have a, a system where we communicate that to our own community here in town, community online. Um, certainly if someone comes in the store and sees the offerings that we have, I think it's more clear, but it, it is less clear um, in this space where we have so much space between all of us right now. So that's, that's definitely something that I think we're trying to address. Um, how do we make sure people feel comfortable and have inviting spaces? Um, and then I think the piece about kids is interesting. Um, and Idris, I'm just going to talk for a little bit. As a kid, I got to take some art classes at Bemis, um, which is a school that's part of the Fine Arts Center. And it changed my life um, to be around other weirdo kids who were artists who, like, you know, needed a, a place in town. Um, and I never would have stepped foot inside the Fine Arts Museum if it wasn't for Bemis. So yeah, yeah. the museum was like a, a kid's class. My family wouldn't have taken me to the Fine Arts Museum. They didn't feel comfortable or welcome there. Um, and so I remember spending hours sitting in front of paintings, just really soaking them up. And that was the only way that I think I got into the arts was I someone else took me there. Um, so the kids piece, I think in particular, is one that I feel just hugely powerful, the potential for the Fine Arts Center to open itself to families in that way. But if I can chime in though, I mean, I feel like we're all talking about these experiences that we're familiar with and we're used to, and we've had these careers with in terms of these personal, you know, in-person theater experiences and, and open mics and um, gallery visits where you're standing and you're seeing the art right there. But now we're all socially distanced. We're all, you know, really trying to, um, you know, a lot of places are closed. A lot, of, a lot of people don't really feel comfortable going out because they're trying to stay home, stay safer at home. So, um, you know, in, your, in regards to the question of, you know, how can the broader community become more engaged in the arts when you really aren't, like nobody's really engaging with anything right now, you know? <laughs> people aren't even engaging with a grocery store if they don't have to, um, and that's a necessity, you know? So um, one thing that's just really been essential and like a pipeline and an outlet for us is is social media, you know, and it can be, um, you know, you can you can start following Peak Radar or you can start following, uh, you know, the FAC or, you know, or just like, you know, um, everyone follow everyone. Well, you could start start with one person. And if you start if you follow one artist in Colorado Springs, I'm sure that that person is going to be talking about another artist and soon you're going to be exposed to this whole whole network of people from the safety of your own couch or whatever. Um, so it's, it's, it's such a weird question because it's like, yeah, how, how do we increase accessibility to the arts if the world was opened up and normal, right? There would be an answer for that. And then there's a whole other answer of how do you increase accessibility to the arts when you, from the, from your house, you know? Um, so, that's great. That's a really great point. I feel like I've been getting that question a lot, which which is telling me a lot. But it's also like you're accessing me right now. <laughs> you know I mean, I'm like yeah, yeah. But 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 you're right. This this is a moment of radical action. I mean, and and how do we? And I think the thing is, how do we carry this spirit of accessibility into? the reopened moment, right? Like, what do we all learn here, children? <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. We gotta do stuff online because then people who have to go to work or whatever, whatever can can get something. And maybe they don't get the thing that, right, that's in the main room, but you know, they get something, at least it's a, the beginning of a conversation. So yeah, that is a very good point. And I think an apt point to round us out and our time together, we've solved all the problems um, really quick, I um, because I am my father's son, he um, he did this thing with me and my brother and sister every year at New Year's. He would always give us our words for the for the coming year, and then at some point he stopped doing it, and that's where we all had like existential, like we're grown ups now crises because we were like we have to come up with our own words. Anyway, so uh, as we close out, I want to I want to sort of always have this as a tradition. 
what is the word that you want to give to the millions of viewers and listeners uh, uh, to, to carry off into, into the rest of today and tomorrow? Uh, take your time. Think about it. Chime in whenever you like. What is the word that you want to leave folks with before we sign off? We we just we have two words. Yeah. We each right. get Morgan went for it. My my word is resiliency. And my word was masks. Wear a friggin' mask, people. <laughs> Not ours. Resiliency mask. Yes. I find my word right now is to listen. Uh, especially as a straight white male who's been fortunate enough to have a privileged upbringing, I feel like my job right now is to listen and learn. Right on. Listen. Juan, take us home. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll go in a different direction. Delight. I'm gonna mm. I'm gonna riff with Ross Gay, the book of delights, and just kind of mm. say. Look for those moments of delight, but I think it builds on the other words that you've just that 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 everyone has wisely given us because I think um, I think I yeah I think it's necessary to, to to remember remember the good stuff and to make sure that we use that to move forward even in these hard conversations we have even with all the Facebook friends you've lost even with the family members you're 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 fighting with and not sure how to uh, see eye to eye you know so but um. But I'm, I'm not trying to say, you know, keep the peace or anything. I think it's time for honesty, too. So that would be my alternate word is is honesty and delight. Yeah. Delight and honesty. All right. Well, y'all, it has been so tremendous. Also, real quick, Lynn, Lynn uh, Hastings had to uh, depart uh, and get back to her job. <laughs> but uh, we appreciate you, Lynn. And uh, we thank you for your time and your ideas and kicking us off in such a lovely way. Um, you all, uh, it, is, it has been a real pleasure. I look forward to continuing to contribute to um, the arts you know, world of, of Colorado Springs. You're all very necessary. Uh, let's continue to stay in conversation and support one another. I think this is gonna be a series, like a monthly series. So uh, you know, if you have suggestions for folks we should, that I should talk to, um, you know, help spread it around. Like, cause this is, this is, you know, just trying to figure out who we are and, 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 and be in contact with our community. So thank you very much uh, on behalf of the whole Colorado Springs Fine Arts Center at Colorado College. Uh, and anyone watching and commenting and liking, hopefully, uh, seconding, amening and hearting, uh, we appreciate y'all and, uh, everybody stay safe out there and, um, be patient and listen, um, and think about the future. All right, that is all. Peace and hair grease. Be well, everyone. Thanks, Idris. <laughs>